In Scaling Up, there are three fundamental underlying principles behind our work. The first has got to be probably my favorite quote of all time, which is, we have the answers, all the answers. It's, it's the question we do not know. In fact, that's the thing that concerns me. I know that, that these, these fast-growing, hard-charging organizations, man, when you get your sights on something through enough you know, perseverance and passion, you're going to figure out the answer. My, my concern is that you're working on the wrong question. And there are four decisions that you absolutely have to get right, and there are right and wrong answers. And then the areas of people, strategy, execution, and cash. And the first decision you've got to make is which one of those four do you want to focus on the most next? In fact, that might even give you guidance where you want to pick around inside this online program. So, people. The real me measure there is your happiness. You know, how much do you enjoy coming into work and dealing with the customers and suppliers and the employees and peers that you need to work with? And I can tell you this, uh, even though it can be tough to be around people, if you've got a contentious relationship, you've, you've got a customer who's got too big a piece of your revenue, you've got a supplier that's got you in a bind, you've got a salesperson who's really mucking up the attitudes of all the rest of the salespeople, uh, you might even have issues at home. If you don't get those issues addressed first, and that's why Jim Collins was always adamant that the people piece comes first, it's going to be hard in order for you to have the emotional energy to focus on anything else that we're going to discuss moving forward. So, people first. And your real, real gut feel is how happy are you? Now, if things are going well, the next thing you want to look at is your top line revenue growth. That and gross margin growth. Those are your two best indicators whether you're on strategy or not. Because look, if you've got a killer strategy, your biggest problem, as Andy Grove said at Intel, is indigestion. You've got too much business coming in and that often kills companies as much as starvation. But if revenue and gross margin aren't growing as rapidly as you would like, you've got a strategy issue. Now, you can get by with decent people and strategy, but if you're going to be able to convert that revenue into profit and spend a lot less time doing it, there you're going to have to nail your execution. So your best indication is you've got an execution challenge is your profitability has not grown along with revenue and you're absolutely working more hours today than you were in the past. You can get by decent people, decent strategy, decent execution, but not a day without cash. And that is, and I'm not talking about whether you can make payroll on Friday or not, this is literally the oxygen that feeds the business model. And there's nothing more frustrating than have a potential acquisition or need to invest like uh, Robert Taylor did in Soft Soap, the seven million to ramp it up is not to have the cash to go after those constraints and opportunities. So there you've got people, strategy, execution, and cash. Are you happy? Is top line and gross margin growing like you would like them? Is profitability and the amount of time you're having to spend to execute this reasonable? And do you have the oxygen that gives you the options to go after the things that you need to as you continue to scale up the business? Like the knee bones connected to the thigh bone, there isn't anything this sequential about these four decisions. They're really kind of intertwined. And so if you want to look at them as kind of a sequence, people, strategy, execution, and cash, what's interesting is that whichever one you think you need to focus on the most next, the root issue might be the one just before it. So for instance, if you're saying, hey, I think I've got a strategy issue, it could be the fact that you don't have the right people at the table working on strategy or those people aren't taking you know, significant enough time like through the council meeting each week to work on strategy. If you think you've got an execution issue, it may be because you're executing a mess. Your strategy is not where it needs to be. If you're short of cash, maybe it's because execution isn't tight enough, generating the profitability you need that then turns into cash. And if you don't have the people that you need, it may be because you're short of cash and therefore can't afford to bring the kind of talent in that allow you to scale up the business. And so, many times the, the area you think you need to focus on the most next, go there, but be aware that the root cause might be the one just before. So that ought to give you some indications of where you want to start within this program first. Now, once we move up from those four decisions, 
There are three disciplines that you need to be able to put in place in order to execute on these decisions. And we've already discussed a few of these in this overview. The first being the importance of setting priorities and those priorities going after the key constraints. Number two, having real data and metrics, both quantitative and qualitative, that allow you to see around corners, that give you the insights, the, the kind of meetings that Mark Zuckerberg's having with customers and employees that allow them to better predict and have foresight into what we need to work on next. And then last, it, it, has, it does us no good to have all this data if we don't get in a room and talk about it. And that's why this meeting rhythm that's been at such the heart of our Rockefeller Habits 2.0 work is critical because this gives us the talk time to discuss the data so then we can figure out what are the constraints where we need then to direct the energies and focus of the organization in order to make this business go. You need people doing stuff. Now we're going to call that people in process. And there are basically three in each one of those areas. On the people side, there are basically three groups of relationships that exist in any kind of business. First, those that you employ, we're going to call those employees, but that's, that's anybody you pay. Uh, so it's, you know, it's employees, it's 1099, it's contract, it's suppliers, it's government officials. Uh, that's just a joke, uh, but not everywhere in the world is that a joke. But it's anyone that you need to employ in order to be able to fuel this business. Customers are then anyone who pays you. And hopefully if you've done this business model right, you're collecting slightly more cash than you're having to pay out to everybody else. And that then feeds the third group of relationships called the shareholders. And those could be you know, investors early on, friends and family, or if you're a public company, your direct shareholders. And so those are the three critical relationships that exist in any particular business. Now, those three relationships are engaged in three basic processes or activities. And that is first, somebody's got to make or buy it. Number two, you've got to sell it. And then there's a, a rule, I don't know if you've heard of it, called buy low, sell high. And it's amazing how many organizations are violating this fundamental rule of business every hour of every day. And that's why this third key process, keeping good records, accounting, is critical so that you know where you're making money by salesperson, by location, by product line, by customer, and where you're not so you can make better decisions. And so those are the two key demands. And what you've got to balance is the fact that, hey, maybe your employees need to be paid more, but what's that going to do to the P&L of the business. Maybe we've got to do some more things to make our customers happy, but are we in a position to be able to afford to do that? And so you're always balancing both the profitability and the cash side, both the people and the process side of the businesses.